Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to give an INFJ check-in about the current situation today. So I know a lot of people right now are in a state of panic or anger or frustration or stress over everything that's happening right now. I mean, this is not just a pandemic, it's also an economic crisis on top of it that has repercussions for a lot of people working. It has repercussions for people with kids in schools. This is a something that is overwhelming us all from multiple areas at the same time. So we are all hit by this and we're all stressed and really tense and really agitated and some of us are really afraid as well about what's happening and really unsure what to do. So I hope this video can help people calm down and relax and to get some uh, sense of control over the situation. First I want to start off with the personal situation. I will be working from home for a month and so will my girlfriend. We, our work is already arranged that everyone from our workplace will be working from home. So has her workplace. So we are adjusting at home to everything. I, honestly, I'm redecorating the house. I'm looking at installing a different second monitor and wireless speakers. And I'm looking at all these small things I can do to make our stay more comfy. I'm thinking about groceries. I'm thinking about shopping. I'm thinking about uh, also fun things that we can do to entertain ourselves during all this because a lot of things are shutting down in my area. So in my area in the Netherlands people are taking pretty strong maatregelen as they call it. Uh, they are taking really strong precautions. They are shutting down a lot of events and venues. A lot of uh, concerts we had coming up can be have been cancelled. A lot of events that we were thinking of attending are probably going to be cancelled. I've got a trip to Toronto coming up in two months and honestly at the moment I have no idea how that is going to go and if that is going to go through. So I'm looking at what I can do and what I want to do and what I'm prepared to do because that's very important. In the Dutch uh, culture there is a saying of uh, you know, uh, there is a Dutch sobriety about the situation. So people try to do what is necessary, but only what is necessary. And so you should look at what am I prepared to compromise on and what am I not prepared to compromise on. One thing I am going to be doing is I am going to avoid using the public transport system as much as possible. That is such an unnecessary thing and something I don't need to expose myself to. And working from home was one of the best ways to avoid that. I can cut down my local transportation costs a lot in the coming month. Beyond that, I'm looking into what I can do on a daily basis. Because, you know, you still want to leave the house. You're not gonna... I mean, I'm an introvert and while people might think I would be celebrating staying inside for a month, I'm obviously not gonna do that. After two days, I would be climbing walls. I need to take a walk every day. I need to get out and I will still be doing and proceeding about my life normally. I will just try to be smart about it. So I will still be grocery shopping. I'll still go out to local cafes and restaurants. I will still be supporting local businesses. I'll still be shopping and living my life the way I normally do as much as that is possible. The only thing I'm considering is how do I do that? Yeah, first I'll prioritize smaller event venues and smaller cafes and restaurants. Areas where not as many people are clustered together. I'm not going to go into big crowds if I can avoid it. I'm going to choose to go to uh, better shopping areas where there's a lot more space. And I am going to make sure that I don't stay too close to people or too much in crowds. I'm going to limit social contact when necessary, when possible. Uh, personally, if there is nothing you can do to prevent it, if my girlfriend has it, I will get it. And yeah, then I will get it and then I will have to stay inside for 14 days. And then uh, what we have to count on is, yeah, the local culture is going to go on. We're not going to stop delivering packages. Transports are going to go around as normally. Healthcare is going to run as normally. There are things we cannot shut down, you know. Grocery shops are going to stay open. They are staying open in Italy and they'll stay open here. Um, there will still be local delivery companies to help out. There will still be I, I still sometimes order from grocery companies that deliver to my door. So I still have a lot of uh, support to count on in that area. And I expect those services to exist and to stay on. And uh, 
then I'm looking at, so, okay, what kind of personal changes can I make? And obviously, yeah, you have those basic ones like wash your hands and, uh, you know, don't touch your face and all that. But the, yeah, that's that is only going to help you to a bit. Also, avoid touching hand uh, uh, knobs with your hands because, yeah, if somebody else did, yeah, then it's over. Uh, try to ke keep your phone clean because if your phone is dirty and you touch your phone, yeah, there's no point. So try to work on those things, you know, also your outerwear when you come home, try to shower after you've been out, you know, those, uh, those things can also really make a big difference. Uh, otherwise, I'm also looking at, you know, how can we entertain ourselves and what can we do? <laughs> Even our cinema has made adjustments. Now, if you want to book and go to the cinema here, you can only be 100 people in the same cinema hall and they are, you cannot choose your seats anymore. They are going to arrange your seats so that everybody sits at a safe distance from one another. So we're making all these crazy changes in our society right now that one month ago nobody would have ever dreamt would happen. You know, who ever thought that our government had the right or possibility or authority to do anything like this? Whoever thought this was ever going to happen? And uh, here is some words for comfort. These things cannot and should not be permanent. I mean, a lot of people are worried, like, what about the month from now on then? Uh, are we sure the virus is gone then? What if it comes back? So the thing you can count on and the good thing you can count on is society has to move on and we cannot keep things shut down forever. We're going to eventually have to... Uh, start going back to work and some at least some of us are <laughs> gonna have to start showing up at work again some services are gonna have to keep going or they'll go out of business you know and you yeah there is some things you can choose to do and some things you cannot choose to do so at most I only see this happening for a month and from month I want on maybe they'll start opening some things up but keeping some things more closed. They'll still be cautious, they'll say still monitor the situation, they'll follow up on certain areas, they'll look at certain places or uh, safe spots, they'll still have some recommendations you should follow, but they'll start opening things up and yeah, life will go back to some kind of new normal. Then we'll have to judge the situation. We'll have to look what's going to happen after this. How is the virus going to come back and how much and how bad is it going to get? Nobody really knows because, yeah, this virus has not been out there for that long and has not been studied for that long. We know that in China and South Korea, they have been able to do a lot to contain it. And uh, properly in Italy, at some point, you're going to start seeing the effects of the quarantine there as well. A lot of people are obsessed about the count and I would stress to not stress over the count so much because looking at those maps, looking at those numbers, yeah, you can do that, but it's only going to give you more stress and it's only going to give you more worry. And, you know, those are only numbers. Those only reflect the amount of people that are tested. A lot of people are just going to stay at home. They might have it and they might self-quarantine, but they'll never get tested. Because what's the point? What's the point of putting another person on that map? Most importantly, follow the recommendations. Stay, if you feel sick, stay home. And uh, if you have the symptoms associated with an influenza, stay at home for at least 14 days. Those are the things you can do to make a difference. Think not only about how can I avoid being infected, but how can I avoid infecting other people, you know? Think social responsibility. You have a responsibility for how you impact other people. And... Uh, if you can show solidarity with other people, that's the best thing you can do to contain the spread. I'm also hearing a lot of discussion right now about schools. And uh, sure, it is and might be possible to close some schools. And I would focus on upper level educations where you can do distance educations. And you can keep that closed for a while. Uh, but I think for lower level educations, that's something we're just going to have to keep open and see. Uh, honestly, I hope that... Uh, we should focus our measures on companies uh, rather than schools. We should focus on protecting the elderly rather than the young because it appears the young are less affected than the old people are. And it looks like the old people are the most at risk of this kind of a virus. So focus on getting those kind of people uh, safe and keeping those people happy and healthy. And yeah, 
be kind and be supportive to people in your community. If you feel that anybody in your neighborhood is sick or is uh, down with influenza and has issues, try to help them if you can. You follow up with them, make sure they're okay, make sure that they have groceries, make sure they have everything they need and help out if that's possible. Just do something small, you know. Everybody should try to keep an eye out for each other in these times because a lot of people don't have friends or family members that can come up and help them out if something happens. So. Uh, work together with people who live in the same building or neighborhood as you to make sure that everybody's safe and that everybody's kept well. And don't uh, be inhuman, you know. Uh, don't uh, exaggerate. Don't uh, take this too hard. Because uh, this is not just a threat to health, it's a threat to mental health and mental well being. And mental well-being is also something very important. You know, people will still have needs. People will still need social interaction. People will still need help and support from loved ones. People still need close contact. People still need a lot of things, you know, even throughout these times. It's not like these things are going to stop being important. So um, also make an active effort to, to think about your own mental health and your own mental well-being. So try not to stress too much and... Uh, don't go crazy over the media and don't go crazy about what's happening in your community and who might have it and who might not have it. Uh, the question is not, is it in my community yet and how many has it in my area and how afraid should I be? You know, you don't know. The, we don't know how many they have it or how spread out it is at this point. How many people walk around without any symptoms? We don't know that. So we can't worry about it you know we can't worry about something we cannot know or cannot understand or cannot uh, fathom at this point this is something that is out of control and that could be anywhere and so uh, you have to think once again do what's necessary but only what is necessary do what you can to avoid getting it but if you get it you get it yeah there is nothing you can do about it. And uh, uh, if other people have it, yeah, they have it. There is nothing bad about them as people. There's no reason for stigma or for panic or for fear mongering or anger against people who have been affected, who have spread it to other people. Just, uh, yeah, try to do what's necessary and work with your workplace or employer or work with people in your community to find good solutions to keep you all healthy and happy. Do your best to get exercise, you know, do your best to make sure you get some sunlight every day. Do your best to make sure that you're happy and safe and well and uh, do your best to take care of the people around you. Send messages to people you haven't talked to for a while. Uh, start playing some more video games, you know. Uh, Get some, download some movies or uh, invest in Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever you want to pass the time. Go rent, uh, go order some books to read. Take some time to work on a project. Learn a new language, you know, whatever. Uh, just keep your mind active and your body active and your self happy. That's most important.